Good afternoon. I'm calling this meeting to order. Welcome to the Sea Rolly Rotary Club, the best Rotary Club in the universe. Today's invocation will be with Mike Moser. I got it. Oh, we're not praying with Mike. We're praying with Pat. Uh, bow our heads, please. Uh, thank you uh, for letting us gather today as a club. Please bless this meal that uh, we are sharing today. Uh, thank you for the company of our guests and the speakers who are joining us today. Uh, please give our world leaders the uh, strength and the guidance uh, to reach peaceable resolutions to the conflicts around the world. We ask this in your name. Amen. All right. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please join us in the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And today's song is with Christina Trader, who has promised me not as long as last week. Yeah, since I, tor since I tortured you last week, we're just going to do a short rendition of You Are My Sunshine. Ready? Go. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. All right, you may be seated. All right, besides our program today, do we have any visiting Rotarians? No visiting Rotarians? Besides our program. All right. Do we have any guests of Rotarians? Don? I'd like to meet Matt Baxter, a prospective new member. Welcome. Hi, Matt. And are there any other visitors? I don't see any. All right, well, welcome, Matt, and welcome to our program. We'll introduce you in just a bit. Let's move on to club business. Congratulations again to Mark and Chuck. Um, they're going, going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight at the high school, so the event starts at 5.30. Hope to see a bunch of you there. We also have um, Arlene Eastman. She's getting inducted. Um, the late Larry Nelson and the late Bob Hickman. So if you know any of those, you are very welcome to come and celebrate their contributions. Let's see, February 24th, that's this Saturday, we have um, our service Saturday at Helping Hands Food Bank from 11 to 1 p.m. And that's also during their big um, fill the bus, fundraiser, stuff the bus, thank you. Um, but fundraiser so um they love food but they love cash more because they can spend um the money a lot more um wisely than we can by, by bringing a few cans they can uh, make it go a lot further um let's see february 27th next tuesday ladies we're meeting at steph's house you should have an invite in your calendar february 29th that's next thursday it's an evening meeting. And if you didn't read your email, you should be exciting because they're excited because our very own Lynn Tucker, wave your hand. Everyone knows Lynn. Yes. Everyone has surely sat beside Lynn at some point in their life and seen the amazing cartoons that he draws. Um, unlike those cartoons that might not be family appropriate, he has promised to keep it family friendly and teach us how to draw cartoons next Thursday day um and we will be meeting and um christine's ordering food and bring drinks so please let christine know if you're going to be there and how many will be with you if you're bringing guests and i believe we're having it here but we'll confirm that in email um march 2nd lynn julia and i will be going up to the grant seminar in ferndale mark uh, let's see may 3rd 4th and 5th is the district 50 50 conference they extended the early bird Great. So if you haven't registered like me, who meant to and keep forgetting, um, that was extended to February 29th for $100 per person or $200 for your entire family. May 10th is the Camp Rotary Auction. Um, it's really is time to start turning in your auction items. 
Um, the committee is also um, still working on um, finding sponsors to offset the cost of the venue. So if you know someone potentially, or even if you are interested, please contact Tomas or John Janicki. Um, Let's see, installation dinner, just put it on your calendar, June 28th, that's Shelby's 17th birthday. So I expect a round of happy birthday to my daughter. It will uh, make that happen. Any other club announcements or business before we move into our raffle? Nope. All right, let's do our raffle. Okay, we have a raffle. First number, 35. Three, five. Well, come on up. You got an option here. You can take one of the uh, bottles of wine, the beer, or you can spin the wheel and take your chances. Spin the wheel. $25 to Cedar Woolley Auto Parts. Nice. We will get that gift certificate to you in just a minute. How about we'll stay with uh, 25? Steve Huggins. What are you going to do here, Steve? Spin the wheel? Spin the wheel. It's a mighty swing. He's walking away like he's not going to pay or win or do anything here. Oliver and Hammer. A cool surprise for Oliver and Hammer. Final number. 069. Is that my number? Well, there you go. I win. Cool. Well, I'll go against the grain and just take the bottle of wine. There we go. Ooh, what's... No idea what that one is. Okay. That's the raffle. All right, and are you Sergeant Arms? I am the Sergeant of oh, Arms. Yes, I can't. Okay, as it. as always, if you're going to leave early, pay the two dollars and uh, make sure you say you're sorry to our guests here for not sticking around. If you haven't paid your money for your birthday this month, it's two dollars. If you haven't paid for your anniversary, it's three dollars. Didn't sign in, that'll cost you a buck. Haven't got a badge on. Do we see? Any? Everybody seems to have badges on. Nicely done, people. Nicely pun. Hey, if your name was in the picture or your picture was in the paper this past week, pay $2. And uh, I guess we already covered the Helping Hands event. If you have never participated in one of these Stuff the Bus events, if you've never donated money to it or put diapers or food in one of those buses, go ahead and pay a buck because you really ought to take part in those. They're great. Uh, I missed the meeting last week. I was back in North Carolina for my son's uh, uh, Green Beret ceremony. He, he actually got his Green Beret. And how many military veterans do we have in this room right now? I know we got a couple of them. Lynn, Don, thank you guys for your service. I have to tell you, this, this Green Beret ceremony was one of the most uh, moving ceremonies I've ever been part of. Uh, to see these young men, there was 142 of them that actually made it through out of 370 some odd that started. Uh, these guys are all volunteers. They all volunteered for the service. They volunteered to go to uh, jump school, and then they volunteered to be Green Berets. And it's it's just kind of a it's a real moving ceremony. So we ought to be very thankful of all our military veterans. Make sure you uh, say thank you to them. Today is the birthday of somebody uh, especially important to this country. Anybody know? Yeah, it's George Washington's birthday, the founder of our country. He was born in 1732, so I thought we'd do a little uh, how well do you know George trivia kind of thing. We'll start right here at this table. Where was George born? Mount Vernon, Virginia? Well, he was born in Virginia, but he was actually born in his father's plantation on Pope's Creek in Westmoreland, Virginia, on February 22nd, 1732. He was the first son of Augustine Washington and his second wife, Mary Ball Washington. So a uh, couple of bucks, please. We'll just do some general trivia here. We'll start over here. George Washington was, was one of the largest producers in America of what? 
tobacco. Think another vice. He was alcohol, cocaine, <laughs> cocaine. No, no, no. He actually uh, produced 100 or 11,000 gallons of whiskey valued at $7,500 back in the day. Today, that'd be $120,000 worth of whiskey. So go ahead and pay a couple bucks for that. What was George Washington's middle name? And I'll give you a couple of choices. Uh, Aaron, he didn't have one. Thomas, Francis, or Michael? George, George Michael, that'd be too weird, wouldn't it? That'd be weird, that'd be weird. Francis, we're going with Francis. He actually didn't have a middle name. Uh, the use of middle names was not a common practice in Europe, its colonies, until the 19th century. So of the first 20 United States presidents, only five had middle names. Let's see what we can uh, come up with for you guys. Uh, before he became a soldier, what was Washington's chosen profession? He was a surveyor. Uh, how old was he when he became a surveyor? 22? Well, I know, you don't know. 17. So, you know, it's my job to get money, so a couple of bucks from you guys. And then final, we'll, we'll just come up here to you guys. And, uh, do you want to ask our folks online? And oh, they we can, can do demo? that. Uh, folks online, we'll, we'll get to you in a minute. And you guys don't have to pay. Uh, but these guys have to pay. How tall was George Washington? 5'9"? Well, you know, I'll give you some choices. 6 foot, 5'9", five 5'10", five 5'6", five six, or 6 foot 2. Stick with 5'9". He, he was 6'2". Yeah, he was actually 6'2 and 200 pounds. There we go. And then for you online... What war was sparked by an attack led by a 21-year-old George Washington? Anybody online want to answer? Is anyone online actually listening? Evidently not. Oh, uh, Jeff McCann says the French and Indian War, which is actually correct. Uh, 1754, Washington's surprise attack upon a small French force at Jumonville Glen and his subsequent surrender to the French forces at the Battle of Fort Necessity helped spark the French-Indian War. So there's a little bit about George. Do we have anybody that's happy today? Well, Lynn's gonna be happy. I mean, I can go back around the room and ask more questions, but. So I got a, uh, uh, rem or, uh, I guess a notice on Facebook that, uh, uh, Jeff Westergaard was doing a special on loads of gravel and um, got a hold of him yesterday. He said, I'll be there tomorrow morning. How much do you need? Where do you want it? He came up, did the job. He did it a little unhappy. He did it too well. So now I don't have an excuse to go out and blade the road with my tractor. Um, it's just there now. But wonderful job. I'm going to put out something on Facebook if anybody else is looking for something. He did a great job, showed up, and just knocked out of the ballpark. Great. Josh. Got a couple happy bucks here because it is officially baseball season. I, there's other sports I know in the spring, but um, uh, so this year I'm going to, I'm going to help with the high school program again. I'm going to coach the C team. We're going to have three teams. There's 60 kids signed up to, to play. Uh, we probably won't get all, all of those kids probably get about 50, 55 or so, but yeah, we're one of the only programs in the in the area that has uh, that will have three teams. So it's good to good to have uh, that interest in baseball. Not all of them are going to be professional baseball players. That's where I come in. You know, some kids need to learn how to throw and catch still, even in high school. But uh, pretty impressive that we can have three teams at Cedar Woolley. So great. Thank you for your service. Anybody else happy? OK, Ruth, I guess it's all yours. All right. So our program today, we have Skagit Women's Alliance Network, or SWAN, as some of you may know it. We have Heather Shand, who is the Vice President of SWAN, 
And we have Rochelle Eason, who is also Pat's lovely wife. Um, and she's the Swan Scholarship Chair. Heather is the Skagit County Superior Court Commissioner, presiding over family and juvenile calendars in Skagit Sup County Superior Court, and is focused on improvement of youth and families within our community. She's also an active Skagit Rotary member, as well as many other local organizations. Heather has dedicated much of her personal and professional life to serving families in Skagit County during some of the most stressful times of their lives. Children and their successful development is her passion. Rochelle is a local attorney at her law pra practice, Eason Law Firm, a certified mediator, and a certified professional coach focused on transformational nutrition and mental wellness. Rochelle is an extremely active participant in the local community, including the current president of Mount Vernon Rotary Club, and she is also next year's president and graduate of Leadership Skagit class of 2022. So I'd like to welcome you to our club. Yeah, people Sorry. are really here. I was just going to say thank you for having us. I'm always, it's always fun to come to the Cedar Valley Rotary Club and Pat can pay my happy bucks for me, but um, it's just nice to be here. Um, so we're just here to talk about Swan. We're kind of on a little um, traveling, oh, we're on a little traveling um, tour to talk about the changes of Swan because it is our 40th anniversary. Um, Skagit Women Alliance Network. How many of you have had encounters with Swan before? How many of you have been to the Woman of the Year event in October? How many of you have nominated a Woman of the Year candidate? All right, so some of you <laughs> and some of you not. Uh oh, I don't know if I know how to do this. I don't know. Oh, 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 maybe we went too far. Okay, I got it. it out. Okay, so Swan was founded in 1984. Um, again, we are in our 40th year this year. The mission of SWAN, as you can read it, we won't read it to you, but basically it's to promote <clears throat> uh, women in our local community and to recognize uh, their achievements. Um, we have two main issues that we do every year. One is the Woman of the Year event in October. It's the third Thursday of October. I believe it's the 17th this year at the Swinomish Casino. And the second is our scholarship program. tell you a little bit about the scholarship program. Um, We're probably not going to go off the slides. To yeah, be with I'll you. just <laughs> kind of wing it. So how many of you knew that Swan has a scholarship program? Okay, so our scholarship program is a little bit different than um, like the Rotary scholarship programs in that we recognize um, like adult learner students going on for further education. So for example, you have your associates and you're going on for a bachelor's or you're changing careers and you've decided to become a yoga instructor. Um, that's one of the scholarships that we funded before. Um, so those kinds of things. Or you have a bachelor's and you're going on for a master's or some other kind of um, degree. So those are the types of awards that we offer for scholarships. And we're currently accepting applications through the deadline is June 30th, and we'll make those decisions in September for this year, but we accept those applications all year. And at the end, there's gonna be a QR code where you can get the application online. I didn't bring any with me about those, but that's the gist of our scholarship program. The SWAN is made up of board members. We are a volunteer group. None of us are paid. Um, we are partnered with Skagit Publishing who helps get the word out about SWAN. Um, part of the family is also we have volunteers that come help us at our events. We have our event sponsors, um, which is robust. We've had a lot of success with our event sponsors. We have raffle sponsors. The way that we uh, make money for the scholarships in order to give them out is we have raffles at the Women of the Year event, and all of those um, funds are what fund the scholarships. Obviously, we have our attendees, but the most important part of our of our team and our, our family, as we call them, are our recipient winners. Um, we have four categories for one woman of the year, not just one. Um, one is transformative leadership. One is mentorship of women. One is, go to the next slide, it's there. Next, next, <laughs> keep going. Transformative leadership, mentorship, 
professional achievement and um, community involvement, community engagement. <laughs> Great. So we give four awards every year and nobody knows what the award is gonna be for or who it's to. We have changed our processes for Women of the Year. And this is really why we're kind of on this uh, traveling road tour. We have gotten feedback over the years that we've been doing this, that there is what's called the black swan feeling of women who are going through the process who are not chosen to be a Woman of the Year recipient. Historically, um, women were nominated. They were then asked to put together a resume and basically a portfolio to sell themselves to a group board that's chosen by our board members, um, a judging board, and then the recipient, the nominees would come and try to sell themselves uh, to get an award. Their names would be published as nominees, and then the winners would be named at the event, and then obviously published um, in the paper as well as social media. This made women feel that they were not being um, recognized for their accomplishments, but instead they were recognized for failing if they were not chosen. And that is not something that we wanted women to walk away feeling um, a sense of lack of empowerment. We want to empower. These are very strong, powerful, successful women. Um, and you shouldn't have to go through such a rigorous process to get an award. Um, so we've changed the process now. The process requires the nominators to give us a lot more information about the nominees. So then we as a board do a due diligence on our own. We talk to references that the nominators provide. Um, we talk to people in the community that we know, and then that's how we determine who the winners will be. And we use our, the board um, uses a kind of scaled process to determine, and then the, nomin the nominees will know that they're getting the award, but they won't know which award they're getting until the day of the event. Um, so we really tried to change the perception of SWAN to be an empowerment and acknowledgement rather than leaving anyone to feel that they are not um, worthy of an award, because nom being nominated is absolutely, um, I guess you would say, enough to some, but we don't want to publish people who aren't winning um, awards. That didn't, that black swan is really the issue that we're having. So we've changed that over the last year. Last year was our first year of our new process. Uh, and so we want to get the word out so everyone knows that you can nominate someone for Women of the Year. We also have what's called Rising Swan, which is someone who's new in their profession, who is quickly ascending um, in their profession by what they're doing. So it's a little bit of a different process, same process for nominating, um, but different criteria. So it's someone who's not necessarily young in age, but just new to their profession, who is quickly ascending and doing great work. And that's always, that's kind of been surprising. Um, we had a lot of comments about that this past year, but that's one of the things that's great about the rising swan because it doesn't mean that you're fresh into um, a, a career. It's you're fresh into your career and you're really making a big difference in Skagit County. And that is the whole point of our program. Want to go the next one? What's next? Oh, transformational leadership. Did we talk about that? Trans I was the first one. Okay. Yep. So just a little bit about um, what events that we put on. Really, we put on one event, and that's the Women of the Year event in October. Um, but we work all year long. Uh, we're a working board, and we meet every month, and we are, this is kind of our timeline. So January to June, we're really working at getting out in the community and getting applications for scholarships, getting um, nomination, nominate, nominees uh, for what the Women of the Year. And uh, the, like I said, the scholarship deadline is June 30th. And then in August, we um, we didn't do it last year and I'm not sure if we're doing it this year, but there's a nomination celebration um, to recognize. We are doing it. We are, okay. Tell, that, why don't you tell us about the nomination celebration? So at the nomination celebration, the pa our past winners, which we had a list earlier, Lisa Janicki is a past um, winner. Um, quite a few very, very powerful and celebrated women are in that list. They are invited to come um, and meet our nom our well, they're going to be our award winners. So it's no longer a nomination celebration. It's actually who's winning. And their nominators come. And it's just a time for them to meet us and learn, just meet us, not even learn anything. Um, and then 
they may or may not, we're going to, we might change it where they know what award they're getting so they can tailor their speech in that way at the, at the event, because the four categories are very different. Um, but their applications speak for themselves. They really do fall in the categories just randomly. Um, it's an actually really interesting process. So we have that in August just to meet them and then they can start to invite people to come to, to the celebration in, in October. Yeah, and then the, we've just finished out the year of getting ready for the next year. So that's when we, um, and we are accepting board members. So if you're interested, you can see Heather and I today or shoot us an email or a call um, if that sounds interesting to you. Um, but we bring in our new board members and explain the process. I'm, I'm new to the board, so I'm still learning all this stuff. But um, yeah, so that's kind of like the high level timeline. One of the things we're running into and one of the other reasons we're out here on this kind of road tour is um, we have historically published our scholarships at local universities, Western, um, Edmonds Community College, Skagit Valley College, Whatcom Technical College, and some of the, not the high schools, but any of those schools. We have recently been told that we are no longer allowed to publish at those universities or institutions because of the new affirmative action ruling by the United States Supreme Court, that they are not allowed to publish or in any way um, emphasize things that are, I guess, exclusive, and we are exclusive to women. Sorry to say, guys, you can't get a scholarship and you can't be woman of the year unless you change your gender, um, which can be done. You can do that too. You would qualify. Um, so we're really running into a barrier we think is coming down the pike is how we're going to get the word out about these scholarships because they really are beneficial to women who are returning to school uh, to better their careers. A lot of people don't know that there's money available and financial barriers can happen for those who are trying to return to school. Um, so we're trying to find ways about around that by coming to local service groups and organizations to get the word out. So if you know of anyone or work with anyone who's looking to go back to school, um, please do visit our website and direct them to that website so they can apply for a scholarship. We give um, normally 2000 or upwards more per scholarship recipient, and they can direct that at whatever quarter they ask for. So even if they're told in August that they're getting a scholarship, but they don't, they're not gonna enroll until December for winter quarter or spring quarter, we will pay it to the institution at the time that they direct it. Yeah. So how we raise money, um, if you look back at this slide, the, the raffle items at the bottom. So it's a little bit different than any other event that you might go to. It's not an auction. Our, so our, we raise money solely by these raffle tickets and it's like $5 and I'm not a wine drinker, but the wine, like it was, it's like what, 160 bottles or something. I mean, it's a crazy amount of wine, $5 and you could win it. So we're not asking, so it's not like a huge expensive raffle, um, but the prizes, are pretty awesome. So that's mainly how we raise money. Um, we do get sponsorships too. So businesses can sponsor this event. One of our partners, and we have a standing board member that's with Gadget Publishing. So this is an event that's in the paper. Um, this is an example of the, the sponsorship notifications. So these will go on the website and then they go through social media, um, the newspaper. So it's a op great opportunity for local businesses to support women in Skagit County. And um, that, that's basically it. That's how we raise money. We don't have any plants. Yeah, no plants. I mean, you guys have a lot of plants at your auction. <laughs> it's one of the things I like about it. Uh, plants and gravel. Gravel is a hot topic here. I never can win gravel at your auction. I don't know why. I try. Sometimes my dad outbids me, though. That creates a problem. Um, so we don't have any plants, but we do have wine and um, other raffle items that you can try to get. Our event is um, involves speaking. So our all of our Women of the Year recipients and Rising Swans give a speech and talk about themselves or what created their empowerment and um, give them an opportunity to thank those who helped them get there. So it really is an evening of celebration and an evening of um, empowerment. Yeah. Do you guys so, have any questions? 
We're kind of just speaking yeah. off the PowerPoint that I know is very, very fun for you. No questions for Swan. How many? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Not that we are aware of, but we may not know, right? So that for those of you at home, the question is, have there ever been a transgender applicant and is there any bylaws on how to handle that? Because it's just a matter of time before it happens and then you're gonna have a political show of we've, sorts. We've not to date had one that we're, like I just said, that we're aware of, but I don't think that's a question that we would ask. If someone is identifying as a woman, um, then we would accept them as how they identify. Interestingly enough, it's interesting that you bring this question up because we just did our bylaws and they do not address it, but we might be bringing <laughs> that back to our next board meeting at your suggestion. I think well, it would be a policy. Well, I think first, that yeah. I heard your opinion. I don't know if she agrees with you. Yeah, I don't. But I guarantee you on that board of women, not all of them are on the same page on that issue. So it, it just seems like the board should have a discussion and policy. It, it doesn't really matter necessarily what the outcome is, but I think you ought to be ready for it. Yep, I agree. It sounds like it's something we'll talk about at the next board meeting. Yeah, I think if anything, that would be a policy um, that we would put in place, if any, but to be honest, it has not come up. So good question though. Yeah, good question. So how many of you have women that you can think of right now that you would nominate for a woman of the year award? Somebody was just telling me about all the women that he knows. <laughs> so I know, I know that we know some women in here. <laughs> so it could be your wives. If you have wives that are successful, it could be people that work with your wives. It could be people you work with, um, but we're always looking for good nominees for Women of the Year. I'll go back to the, yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for yeah. having us. We're always happy to be at another Rotary meeting and happy to be on our road show. Yeah, so thank, thank you, you so much thank for you. inviting us. Yeah. All right, thank you to Heather and Rochelle. Appreciate you coming and educating us about your organization. And I also shared that out on our Facebook um, page for the club. So hopefully you get some folks visiting your website and taking advantage of the scholarship applications and nominating some amazing women in our community. I've been to um, the nomination recognition and it was very well done and it was fun to see the movers and shakers in Skagit County and all present there. So um, any other announcements or comments? Lynn Tucker. Do we want to bring up the thought about the coins instead of the pens or you want to do that in a different? In we'll do that later. We could, you do that later? Unless you do you have some on hand? I think I've got yeah, I got one with me right now. Okay. So, so I guess we're gonna bring it up just in case it hurts somebody's feelings or something. If you're uh, terribly attached to the rotary pens that we give out to our speakers and such, um, the thought about going a different route and they got the smaller challenge coins. Um, really, they're pretty simple. They've got the rotary symbol on it and then it's got, um, it's got our four-way test on the back. It doesn't say Cedar Woolley on it, but it's something a little bit different to hand out to our speakers, any members that want to do it. It's not quite as elaborate as mine, my big retirement coin, but it's a thought. And we wanted to see if anybody thought that that might be a good direction to go. These are only a, like a buck or a buck and a half a piece, especially when you buy like 500 of them. I don't know what we're paying for the pens, but um, I'm sure there are more than that. Um, we just want to throw it out. Anybody have any strong, we've always done it this way. I don't want to change anything like that. Danny has it. A... 
Yeah. So I, I don't think this is going to hurt anybody's feelings um, unless you go to a bar and you throw your coin down and somebody says, yeah, that's not like my special forces or something like that coin. But um, I think it's just something a little bit different. And both of my grandkids have two or three of the great big monstrous throwing star coins that uh, I made for my uh, for the police department. But just wanna throw it out there. If you have any uh, concerns, comments, or questions, you can shoot them to me or Ruth. And we're gonna, we, we started talking about this at a board meeting just the other night, so. Awesome, thanks, Lynn. All right, so seeing no other announcements, nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, remember to stack the chairs at the table and help with cleanup if you can, and you have a few extra minutes. Thank you so much.